And I want all my options available so I can decide for myself. Ah, uh, Miss Independent. From Rosie the Riveter to Beyonce, the independent woman in pop culture has long been an icon of girl power, inspiring women to unlock their inner potential and stand on their own two feet. You must always have faith in yourself. Looking at examples of the independent woman on screen, we can see some common traits in this sister doing it for herself. She's self-reliant, rejecting the need for other people's validation and not afraid of being alone. Yes, I'm alone, but I'm alone and free. She views herself, above all, as an individual, not conforming to society's expectations and forging her own path in life. I intend to make my own way in the world. I found my own way out of the woods. She probably makes, or has, her own money, which is a big reason she gets to be independent. Boom! Dollar dollar bills, y'all! She doesn't need a man. Her story might not even have a love interest. And I'll be shooting for my own hand! Or if it does, it might relegate love to a subplot in her narrative, show her resisting the need for romance, or at least feature her being single for a lot of the story. But the most exciting, challenging, and significant relationship of all is the one you have with yourself. Her agency drives her plot. Well, put some skates on, be your own hero. <laughs> in contrast to films that feature damsels in distress or women only as supporting characters, the independent woman narrative sees her taking action to solve her own problems. The only way to get what you want in this world is through hard work. This confident lady who speaks her mind and won't let anyone stand in her way can sometimes be painted as something close to a superwoman. You want to get through this? Do as I say. But as much as the independent woman is an important symbol of female empowerment, her story's focus on self-sufficiency can also pressure women to hold themselves to an impossible standard of doing it all without needing any support. I'm afraid that but let someone else take care of me that I'm not really me anymore. Here's our take on why the independent woman shouldn't have to do everything on her own and where we hope to see her go from here. Go ahead. Underestimate me. You're watching The Take. Thanks for watching and be sure to share and subscribe. This video is brought to you by Mubi, a curated streaming service showing exceptional films from around the globe. It's like your own personal film festival streaming anytime, anywhere. All I've ever done is bend my life around what men decide they need. Well, not now. I'm sorry. I won't do it. Independence is ultimately about having the power to make choices for yourself that determine your future. As Kelly Herson of The Outline writes, agency in film describes our capacity to take independent action and to assert control over our own circumstances. To be at home, you must find your own path. There is no independent man trope in cinema or pop culture because it isn't needed. Men have always implicitly had that power. If you were a white man, would you wish to be an engineer? I wouldn't have to. I'd already be one. For women, though, independence traditionally comes from rejecting male authority and defying the roles and norms expected of them. How come Daryl let you go? Because I didn't ask him. The icon of the independent woman has evolved alongside changing societal standards. You can't afford me. But through the years, we can see some consistent patterns in how women on screen have managed to assert their agency. You don't always have to be who they want you to be, you know. A key part of the independent woman is that she has her own money. Money is the biggest problem with all of this, because if every woman in this room was independent, if she was someone who had her own money, marriage would take a very different view today. Whether she makes bank or happens to be independently wealthy, the upshot is that she's not reliant on a man or anyone to financially support her. After all, when Destiny's Child sang Independent Woman, the point they drove home was that the song's narrator bought everything she has for herself. The independent woman's focus on finance speaks to the fact that a big reason women's agency has long been so limited is due to monetary realities. And as a woman, there's no way for me to make my own money. 
So don't sit there and tell me that marriage isn't an economic proposition because it is. So the rise of the career woman in film and TV represents women not just proving themselves and claiming their place in the workforce, but also gaining financial independence, which is a key challenge to gender inequality. And with that, Ms. Miranda Hobbs Esquire, aka Just Me, bought herself her first apartment and promptly took herself out for a drink. Another motif we see in the independent woman story is this character taking on the big city. Anything is possible. This is New York. In this narrative, the city represents freedom, options, and possibility, as well as intense challenge. So by conquering this intensely competitive, hostile environment where so many others fail, the independent woman proves her chops and, more importantly, finds herself. We're different. We're the strong ones, and you can't break us. Meanwhile, starting in 1970, Mary Richards of The Mary Tyler Moore Show showed how the unmarried, motivated woman could find purpose in her work. Murray, I've never fought him on a story before, but I am going to fight him on this one, and what's more, I'm going to whip him. The same decade gave us the original Charlie's Angels, a mainstream example of female leads taking over the male-dominated field of crime-fighting action-adventure. Once upon a time, there were three little girls who went to the police academy. In the 90s and 2000s, the rejection of male power structures became a popular focus on girl power. Defined as a self-reliant attitude among girls and young women manifested in ambition, assertiveness, and individualism. Hey, buff. Need a hand? No, thanks. I'm good. The 2000 remake of Charlie's Angels, with its soundtrack featuring Destiny's Child's independent woman, gave us angels who owned their sexuality openly and fully, using it to achieve their goals. And that's kicking your ass. While interacting with male characters who seemed essentially useless. A central tenet of the girl power message is don't underestimate us. I've been fighting with one arm tied behind my back. But what happens when... I'm finally set free. This theme plays a big role in stories about the independent woman who finds her agency in her later years, often after she's thrown a curveball that disrupts her more conventional, settled life. And the don't underestimate us message is driven home even more strongly in the independent woman narrative about the single mom doing the impossible alone. Just want to be a good mom, nice person, a decent citizen. Julia Roberts' character in 2000's Erin Brockovich fights her way into a law firm and almost single-handedly brings down a damaging corporation. For the first time in my life, I got people respecting me. Jennifer Lawrence's character in Joy similarly starts from nothing, but she builds a business empire while supporting her children and an ex-husband living in her basement. In other stories, a single woman or girl is even responsible for remaking an entire system or society. And if the knowledge is given to everyone, then we can have lots of leaders, and soon everyone will be strong. Most centrally, the independent woman has agency over her own narrative. Get away from her, you bitch! She isn't waiting around for other characters to rescue her, and she determines her story's ending. Another key feature of the on-screen independent woman is that she's not defined by romance. I don't want a husband. Increasingly over the years, we've seen independent women narratives that don't include a love interest at all. Young adult role models like prominent Disney princesses and other Disney leads simply don't have love on their minds. A pattern that's especially striking considering that the happy romantic ending was once seen as an inevitable part of the Disney formula. Do people assume all your problems got solved because a big strong man showed up? Yes! What is up with that? She, she is, is a princess. princess! Other contemporary variations on the independent woman's story might involve her trying out love interests, but not finding the right fit. Relegating love to a subplot that proves peripheral. Excuse me, I climbed the North Mountain, survived a frozen heart, and saved you from my ex-boyfriend, and I did it all without powers. Or falling in love, but choosing not to put this above her self-development. I love you too, Richard. But I love me more. The pressure to reject the independent woman's love interest or not give her one can create a conundrum for many stories. Maybe some women aren't meant to be tamed. Maybe they need to run free until they find someone 
just as wild to run with. Many viewers want a partner or family as part of their own lives and wish to see their beloved characters obtain this kind of closure as well. There's nothing intrinsically wrong or disempowering about showing a woman finding love as part of her story. Making it a hard rule that the independent woman must remain forever single risks making the character into an artificial, one-dimensional symbol of girl power, instead of being true to real emotions and the logic of characters' internal drives. On the other hand, making romance too much of a focus in the independent woman narrative can end up betraying what the story was supposed to be about. Numerous stories which begin with a woman who's not defined by wanting a man end up undermining this message through a conventional rom-com ending. Sex in the City, a show about four single women carving out their own unconventional paths. I wanted to let you know that I'm getting married to myself. Oh, and I'm registered at Manolo Blahnik concludes with a fairy tale ending for protagonist Carrie and the man who's long resisted her pleas to settle down. Carrie, you're the one. Andy in The Devil Wears Prada realizes she's been wrong to work so hard and neglect her boyfriend, and comes to view fashion icon Miranda Priestley as a cautionary tale, demonstrating the price of too much ambition. I couldn't do what you did to Nigel, Miranda. I couldn't do something like that. Unfortunately, by concluding on this romantic note, some of these single career women in the big city narratives end up sending the message that independence is just a phase that many women go through in early adulthood before they eventually turn out like everyone else. Narratives even punish women who get carried away with being too independent. Melanie Daniels in 1963's The Birds does want a man, but the single, modern woman lifestyle she's been leading gets her pegged as promiscuous in the small town of Bodega Bay. Actually, the newspaper said she was naked. And the extreme attacks she endures from The Birds feel symbolic of a greater punishment. They said when you got here, the whole thing started. I think you're the cause of all this. I think you're evil! She ends up nearly comatose, having to be rescued by Mitch, with all her agency removed. One way to satisfy the independent woman's love dilemma is through correcting a character who's looking for love in the wrong places, or expecting it to fill too total a role in her life. Legally Blonde's Elle Woods eventually realizes she shouldn't have been chasing a wedding ring from an undeserving guy. Instead, she starts building a career as a lawyer in her own right. But if I'm going to be a partner in a law firm by the time I'm 30, I need a boyfriend who's not such a complete bonehead. And this happens to also lead to the perk of developing an authentic, loving relationship with a better guy, who sees her as an intelligent equal. You hold more cards than you think you do. And I personally would like to see you take that power and channel it towards the greater good, you know? Things may only work out this perfectly in the movies. But the deeper lesson in Elle's story is that when you make the choice to take care of yourself and go in the right direction as an individual, I'll show you how valuable Elle Woods can be. The other details will, more or less, fall into place. Throughout the history of film and TV, we can find many examples of female characters with spouses or children who still come across as in control of their own opinions, actions, and destinies. And ultimately, the modern independent woman can settle down or remain single, as long as she retains her own identity and agency. You want to be sultan. I was born to do more than marry some useless prince. In today's holistic version of this character, independence really means claiming the freedom to be who you truly are and to live how you choose. Is that your given name? Yeah. Why is it in quote? Well, I gave it to myself. It's given to me by me. Still, some stories reflect that, in reality, true independence can come at a great cost. In one of cinema's most iconic and, perhaps, most honest portrayals of what independence for women really means, the title characters of Thelma and Louise choose freedom and agency over their old, respectable but trapped lives. Well, darling, look out, because my hair is coming down. But they pay for it with their lives. No matter who broke your heart or how long it takes to heal, you'll never get through it without your friends. For all its empowerment rhetoric, the independent woman myth can make a real woman feel like she has to do everything herself, without any external support, or to die trying. Viewers are left with a sense that to be truly independent, you must be all alone. But what we really see in the most compelling independent woman narratives is an emphasis on building a support network. 
and the single career woman's case, this might be an alternative support system to replace the primacy of a lover or family in her life. Thank you for being my family. <laughs> Stories like Sex in the City and Broad City focus on female friendship and its ability to sustain and support. Maybe we could be each other's soulmates. Narratives about women in the same profession can also show them forming unconventional families. In a league of their own, a female baseball team during World War II forms strong bonds off the field, coming to accept themselves and gain confidence in their unconventional identities. There's a lot of us. I think we're all all right. In Glow, a ragtag group of women from different backgrounds with unique strengths and flaws come together to create a wrestling TV show. I'm getting to do something, and it feels different. I feel different. Strong. And ultimately, it's togetherness and teamwork that truly allow the women to become independent individuals. It shouldn't be that way. No, it shouldn't. And women should get to direct and not be washed up by the time they're 30. Today's nuanced, complex, and varied independent women are also shaped by the other women in their families. Moana takes inspiration from her grandmother, Tala, to follow her heart. Is there something you want to tell me? Is there something you want to hear? Which leads her on a quest that requires her to be truly independent and ultimately reconnects her people with their historical culture. Tala remains a guide for Moana even in death. I will carry you here with my heart. In Wonder Woman, young Diana is deeply inspired to become like the strong Amazon women around her. You are stronger than you believe. You have greater powers than you know. In Frozen, the true love that can save the kingdom is that between sisters. You sacrificed yourself for me? I love you. Ultimately, these representations of support help move beyond the myth of the independent woman as superwoman and the falsehood that needing help is a weakness. Instead, they showcase that growth and success most often happen when we're together. You're the one who said I could do anything I wanted. The people you love will change you. The nuance and depth of the independent woman's character also depends on who's creating her. Hot tubs aren't really my thing. What is your thing, then? Complex female characters. In House of Cards, which is created and primarily written by men, independent woman Claire Underwood gets to become president of the United States, something no actual woman has ever been able to do. Yet instead of developing an interesting plotline driven by her choices in office, the show instead sees her spending her whole term focused on who killed her husband. A man like Francis doesn't just die. That would be... what's the word? Convenient. Often, a woman's perspective behind the scenes helps lead to more interesting and authentic representations of female agency on screen. Take two recent spy stories from male versus female creators. In 2018's Red Sparrow, written by Justin Haith and directed by Francis Lawrence, we're not given much of a window into the inner world of ballerina-turned-spy Dominica. Take off your clothes. Your body belongs to the state. The camera lingers over her naked body, and despite the illusion of victory when she defeats her uncle, she remains a tool in the hands of men. You belong to them pretty much your whole life. Now I need to work with me. Be your spy. Is it any different from being his? In contrast, in Killing Eve, created by Phoebe Waller-Bridge and primarily written by women, Is it hard to be bad? Not if you practice. Central female characters Villanelle and Eve consistently challenge one another, illuminate each other's individual drives. You should never tell a psychopath they are a psychopath. It upsets them. And shape the plot themselves. I think about you all the time. I think about your eyes and your mouth and what you feel when you kill someone. So where will the independent woman of film and TV go from here? Increasingly, rather than just being a superwoman symbol or step on the way to other things, this character can help real women work through the messiness of unlocking agency in our lives. The independent woman doesn't have to be the perfect image of girl power. She can be lost. She can need help. She can be in the process of figuring out what she wants her life to be. My life is my own. And the future is up to us. 
Most importantly, she makes us understand that, even if it doesn't always feel like it, we are in control of what the future holds. Our fate lives within us. You only have to be brave enough to see it. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified about all of our new videos. This video is brought to you by Mubi, a streaming service we love. Every day, Mubi premieres a new film, whether it's a movie you've been dying to see or one you've never heard of before. There is always something new to discover. So in this world where it's very easy to spend hours debating what you should watch, Mubi is like having a really cool friend with amazing taste in movies, making it so much easier for you. They feature hard to come by masterpieces, indie festival darlings, influential art house and foreign films, lesser known films by your favorite famous directors, and more. Plus, you can even download the films to watch offline, and there are no ads, ever. This month on Mubi, embrace the Halloween spirit through the work of director Kiyoshi Kurosawa. This hand-picked selection includes his epic four-hour ghost series Penance, dramatic short Beautiful New Bay Area project, and celebrated thrillers Creepy and Doppelganger. We can't recommend Mubi highly enough. You can try it out now for free for a whole month. Just click the link in the description below.